So we are going to talk about um, specific parallelograms um, that we have names for. So uh, we are doing rectangles, rhombuses, and squares. So you probably are already familiar with a rectangle and a square. Uh, you are not probably that familiar with a rhombus. So your rhombus is a parallelogram, a parallelogram is a rhombus, if and only if. Again, the if and only if means that you can switch these two around um, and have it be true both directions. Uh, so it's a rhombus if and only if it has four congruent sides, right? So a rhombus would look something like this. It's got four congruent sides. We also have a rectangle. A rectangle is a parallelogram, or a parallelogram is a rectangle, rather, if and only if it has four right angles. So your rectangle has four right angles. And then what happens with a square is that a square is both a rectangle and a rhombus. So that's this part right here. So they have to have four congruent sides and four right angles, which is how we end up with the shape that we all know as a square. Okay. So your square is both a rectangle and a rhombus. So now that we know these properties, remember that these three shapes are all still uh, parallelograms, meaning that we know that these sides are parallel, which means that we know all of the information about parallelograms. So for uh, rectangles, rhombuses, and squares, we know opposite sides are congruent, opposite angles are congruent, the diagonals bisect each other, consecutive angles are supplementary, and a pair of parallel and congruent sides will be uh, true for all of those. Okay. But we have some additional theorems with uh, specific uh, rectangles and rhombuses. Um, so a parallelogram is a rhombus if and only if its diagonals are perpendicular. So if we create a picture of a rhombus, again, rhombus is four congruent sides. If we take a look at their diagonals, these diagonals will have to be perpendicular. So anytime that you get a rhombus, you'll get the diagonals are perpendicular. Okay. Um, we also have a parallelogram as a rhombus if and only if each diagonal bisects a pair of opposite sides, uh, or opposite angles rather, sorry. So make this one a little bit bigger so it's easier to tell. So again, this is a rhombus because it's four congruent sides. We also know that this is a parallelogram even though I didn't draw super great. So we've got our diagonals. So the diagonals bisect the pair of opposite angles. So these are congruent, these are congruent. We also know that these two match because remember opposite angles are congruent. So we know that those four are all the same measurement. And then we know that these are congruent as well. Okay. Um, and then we've got a rectangle, a parallelogram is a rectangle if and only if its diagonals are congruent. So on this one, um, I'm gonna draw this picture up here. Oh, let's just do it right here. So if you've got a rectangle, so let's call this A, B, C, D, then we know that B, D is congruent to A, C, meaning that their diagonals are congruent, which is this part here. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so those are the pieces of information that we know. Now we can use this to help us find other traits that we have. So if we have this rhombus, um, notice because it's a rhombus, we know that it's a parallelogram, right? So we know that opposite sides are congruent, uh, but we don't have anything with a pair of opposite sides. But because it's a rhombus, rhombus is four congruent sides. So we know that all four of these are the same. So what we're going to do is we're going to set these two measurements equal to each other and solve. So we're going to do 3x equals x plus 2. So then to get the x by itself, we're going to subtract x. So we get 2x equals 2. So then we're going to divide by 2. So x is 1. Okay. So notice up here, this, this picture right here means um, a parallelogram. So parallelogram A, B, C, D is a rhombus. Okay. Um, so here, we know that A, B, C, D is a square, which means that we know that these are congruent and that this is four right angles. <clears throat> now, if we look back up here about a square, that means that the diagonals are perpendicular, so we know that this is perpendicular as well. The diagonals back bisect the pair of opposite angles, so we know that these 
are all congruent. I should make that go down all the way. These four are all congruent and these four are all congruent. Um, and we know that its diagonals are congruent. So we know that AM, or sorry, AD is the same length as BC. Um, because we also know that this is a parallelogram, remember we have from before that diagonals bisect each other. So we know that this amount is the same as this amount. Um, we also know that this is the same as this. So what we can do, notice we're trying to find BC. So we know that AM is root 2 and we're trying to find BC. Well, if we know that these two are congruent, we know that this side length is also root 2. So that we know that AD is root 2 plus root 2, which gives us two root 2s. Well, we also know that AD is the same measurement as BC because in a square or in a rectangle, the diagonals are congruent. So we know that AD equals BC. So since AD is 2 root 2, we also know that BC is 2 root 2. Okay. Now, if we look at the next page, we've got that this is a rhombus, okay? and it wants us to find the measurement of CDB. So again, if we look back at the rhombuses, we know the diagonals are perpendicular. Uh, it bisects the pair of opposite angles. So if we look back at our picture, these angles are bisected by this diagonal. So we know that this is the same as this. So if this amount, 4x plus 16, is the one with the one tick mark, we're going to have 4x plus 16, and twice that amount, because it's two of them, will equal the full amount, which is the 12x minus the 8. The eight. So here we're going to distribute, so you get 8x plus 32 equals 12x minus 8. Again, in this scenario, we want to get all of the x's on one side and all of the numbers on the other side. So we're going to, oops, sorry, we're going to subtract the 8x. So we're going to have 32, and then 12 minus 8 gives us 4x minus 8. So now we're going to add 8. So when we do 32 plus 8, that gives us 40 equals, oh, sorry, I remembered it as 8x. It's 4x. So equals 4x. So then to uh, get the x by itself, we're going to divide by 4. So x is 10. <clears throat> okay. Now, uh, this part was supposed to end up on the other page. It might be on yours. Um, but if we go back to our picture, I'm going to draw it on the whiteboard instead where we've got our square, okay. and we have that this, we've got the diagonals, we know that this is A, B, C, D, and this is M, and we know this length is root 2. Okay. It wants us to find the measurement of angle C, M, D. Okay. So, C is down here, M is here, and D is here. Well, again, if we look at the information that we know from what we learned today, we've got that the diagonals are perpendicular, the pair of opposite angles are bisected, and the diagonals are congruent. So if we go back to here, we know the diagonals are perpendicular of a rectangle. Uh, which we know that this is a square, and a square is also a rectangle, so we know that these are perpendicular. Well, if this is 90 degrees and we're trying to find CMD, that means that this is 90 degrees because they're vertical angles. So CMD is 90 degrees. Okay. It also wants us to find the angle measurement for BDM. Okay. So if we've got this picture, um, don't forget that since we know that this is a square, we also know that all of these are right angles, and then all of these sides are congruent, and we know that these two are congruent, and likewise that these two are congruent, because rectangles have diagonals that are the same measurement, and then from uh, parallelograms that the diagonals are 
uh, bisected. So those two measurements have to equal those two measurements as well. Um, so if we're trying to find uh, the measure of BDM, so B is this one, D is here, and M is here. So we're trying to find this length here. But remember, we had this theorem that said if it's a rhombus, so remember that a square is also a rhombus because four sides are congruent, then we know that the uh, pair, uh, the diagonal bisects the pair of opposite angles. So we now know that this angle and this angle are the same measurement. And likewise, these ones over here are bisected the same way because remember, opposite angles are congruent. So if we know that this is the same measurement of this, and we know it adds up to 90, so let's call this x. So we're going to do x plus x equals 90. So this is 2x equals 90, so then x is 45. So that the measurement of BDM is 45 degrees. Okay. Now, we also have something that's called a trapezoid. Um, it is not a parallelogram. Um, your trapezoid only has one pair of of parallel lines. So instead of two pairs of parallel lines, you just have one pair of parallel sides. Okay? Um, so when we're talking about trapezoids, we've got a few names that we need to talk about. Um, the parallel sides we reference as the base, and then the sides are the leg. Now, this is similar to our base angles theorem. Um, we, oh, well, let me, uh, let me restart. So uh, we also have something called an isosceles trapezoid. Remember on an isosceles triangle that the two sides were congruent? That's the same thing with the trapezoid. So your two sides are congruent. So we have that the legs will be congruent. So the ones that are not parallel are called legs. So the legs are congruent. And then also our base angles will, these two base angles and these two base angles will be congruent. Um, so we've got a trapezoid and, I, uh, and an isosceles trapezoid. We're going to save this part for later, but I do want to show you one other definition. So if you look at the next part, we have that there's a kite. Okay, so I'm sure you're all familiar with a kite, but there's a technical definition that we have for a kite. So a kite is a quadrilateral, again, meaning four sides, has two pairs of consecutive congruent sides. So remember that consecutive means next to, and congruent means the same measure. Okay. So when we look here on this picture of a kite, we have that this is a pair of consecutive congruent sides, and then this is a pair of consecutive congruent sides. So that's what gets us the kite shape. So now what we can do is we can also practice naming our shapes. Um, and you can name um, all of the names that it works for or just the most specific name for it. So if we wanted just the specific, most specific name for each one of these, notice we only have one set of parallel lines. We don't have this as a set of parallel lines, so it can't be a parallelogram. Um, it is a quadrilateral um, as well as a polygon, um, but because you've got one set of parallel sides, you know that it's going to be a trapezoid. Because remember, again, our trapezoid has one set of parallel lines. Now, if I had asked you to name all of the names, you would do quadrilateral, polygon, and a trapezoid. Okay. If we look at this one, again, we only have one pair of parallel sides. So this will also be a trapezoid, but also notice that we know that these two sides are congruent. So this will end up being an isosceles trapezoid. Okay, so the most specific name is isos isosceles trapezoid. If we were naming all of them, we would do that it's a quadrilateral, that it's a polygon, and that it's a trapezoid, and that it's also an isosceles trapezoid. Okay. If we look at this picture, we have a pair of congruent sides and another pair of congruent sides, so this ends up giving us a kite. Notice there are no parallel lines, so it can't be a trapezoid and it can't be a parallelogram. Again, if we were naming all of them, this would be a quadrilateral, a polygon, and then just a kite. Okay. If we look at this one, um, you have to be careful because you know that this has four right angles and then opposite sides are congruent. If we know opposite sides are congruent, or likewise opposite angles are congruent, we know it's a parallelogram. So in addition to being a parallelogram, so let's start with all of our names. So this is a polygon. 
Uh, it's also a quadrilateral because there's four sides. Um, it is also a parallelogram. Well, let's just do a parallelogram. I'm struggling with my writing today. Um, it is also uh, because we have uh, four right angles, it's going to be a rectangle. Okay. Um, and that's all that we have for these. Okay. On this one, uh, we have that we've got four congruent sides. So the four congruent sides means that you're going to have a rhombus. So our most specific name here is a rhombus. You again would have, I'm going to forego writing them down, uh, but you would have a quadrilateral, a parallel, a polygon, a parallelogram, and a uh, rhombus. Okay. Here, this is a square, so on this one, our most specific name is a square. Notice we've got the four right angles and the four congruent sides. So if we're naming all of them, so square is our most specific name, if we're naming all of them, we do a polygon, a quadrilateral, a parallelogram, and then it would also be a rhombus and a rectangle and a square. Okay. Um, if we look at this one here, skip that one because we did one just similar to that. Notice, I know that this is a parallelogram. It's not a specific parallelogram. It's not a rhombus or a rectangle or um, rhombus rectangle square, right? Um, it maybe could be a rhombus, but we don't know anything to show that it's actually a rhombus. So we can't say that it's a rhombus unless we have reasoning to show that it's a rhombus. So this one, the most specific name we can come up with is a parallelogram. Now on this one, there's no parallel lines. There's not, uh, so it's not a parallelogram and it's not uh, a trapezoid. Um, we don't know anything about congruent consecutive sides, so it can't be a kite. So the most precise name that we can give this is just that it's a quadrilateral. Okay? Um, so it's also a polygon, but quadrilateral is its most specific name. Okay? Um, so that's how you tell what kind of polygon you're given. And then um, a couple of things about rectangles, rhombuses, and squares.